And uh, hopefully one day we can be able to, you know, plant a tree and redeem it for bonga points or something like that. So <laughs> please help me appreciate and welcome on stage the CEO of Safaricom PLC, Bonapita Ndegwa. Karibu sana. <laughs> So, so thank you, thank you, MC. I don't know whether I should call you my friend. <laughs> At least I, sh I, I can't say for sure that the MC is my friend. Uh, so, so thank you, thank you for, for that. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, the presence uh, of uh, the Honorable Cabinet Secretary uh, for Ministry of Environment uh, and Forestry, uh, Honorable uh, Soipan Tuya, uh, the presence of uh, the Governor, His High Excellency, um, uh, Anne Waiguru, who is the Council of Governors uh, Chair, but also Kirinyaga County Governor, uh, the Chairman of uh, Nation Media Group, but also uh, Dr. Wil Wilfred Kid Kiboro, but also the CEO, my friend Stephen Gitagama uh, of the Media of the National uh, of the Nation Media Group, uh, fellow CEOs, invited guests, uh, all protocols observed. Uh, and um, I think for me, let me start by uh, acknowledging and congratulating the, uh, the Na Nation Media Group for organizing the fourth uh, KUSI Festival. Uh, um, everyone has said that this is one that brings together various stakeholders uh, across different sectors uh, on how we tackle issues that are important to society, in particular climate, uh, for this year. Uh, with the topic uh, of climate change, um, the selection of Karura in particular is, is really uh, very important. I, I live from near here. Uh, I come here quite often, uh, two or three times a week, uh, either to run or to walk. Uh, probably that's why um, and, uh, I am very passionate about, uh, about this place. Uh, I think it was also uh, the, the chair who mentioned about uh, the, the history with the Professor Wangari Mathai. So it is a great place to be. Um, I also, uh, uh, it is also important to, to acknowledge that this comes uh, following the COP27 uh, conference, which I was also uh, able to attend. So I'm going to talk briefly about my reflections from uh, COP27. I think many of them have been, uh, have, have been outlined here by the speakers before and also the panel, uh, but also as context uh, to the panel that is about uh, to, to go on, on, on stage. Um, so for me, uh, the, 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 there were four uh, big areas that, uh, uh, that, that I'll go through, but, but I, I, for me, the, we, we've had multiple times that Africa contributes the least uh, to global warming, uh, accounting for less than 4% uh, of, uh, uh, of the emissions. However, uh, Africa really bears the blunt uh, of the climate uh, crisis. Um, so the first uh, that uh, the first outcome that came from the, the COP27 uh, is the reduction of greenhouse emissions. We need governments, uh, starting with the world most advanced, uh, to uphold their commitments. You had uh, one of the uh, panelists talking about his uh, commitments. Commitments are important uh, to global temperatures below uh, at one and a half, already at, at 1.2. As private sector, if I may say so, uh, uh, as private sector, we need to find a balance between accelerating uh, the, the sustainable development of our economies whilst making uh, critical contributions to protect the environment. The government has outlined a number of areas, including planting trees, re re reforestation, uh, increasing the percentage cover. Uh, we need to make commitments as private sector. We need to work with key institutions uh, uh, within within uh, the, the ecosystem of both national but also county level uh, to bring some of these uh, ambitions to life. Uh, and I was uh, just discussing with one of my colleagues about how we could also enroll schools uh, and support the whole ecosystem so that uh, uh, we create a scale. Uh, so we can, we can do this by leveraging the continent's vast resources uh, and clean energy technologies uh, and prioritizing green uh, infrastructure. The second takeout uh, was about um, we need to deliver on the promise of just transition. Uh, and I think there was a, a lot of conversations earlier in the earlier panel about just transition. Uh, this is simply means greening the economy in a way that's fair and inclusive 
uh, as possible to everyone concerned uh, and creating decent work opportunities and leaving no one behind. It's not just about uh, ensuring that we have a, a, a transition, it's also making sure uh, that we have a just transition. We know that climate action has, and the shift to a green uh, economy presents opportunities to upskill, to expand economies, to build business models uh, that create value. But th th however, this needs to be carefully managed through just transition policies and processes to avoid changes that could result to increased uh, social inequality. Uh, for example, by trying to eliminate the, rel the reliance on cheap uh, smoking emitting fuels like wood and charcoal, uh, Safaricom has partnered with a company called MGAS to provide uh, access to clean and affordable gas through on a pay-as-you-go model. So using technology, uh, how using financing, but also uh, impacting in a way that allows uh, communities to use more uh, green, uh, green energy. The third takeout from COP27, and probably the most crucial and was also discussed earlier, uh, was around finance. It is estimated that 30 billion uh, in financing uh, is required annually over the next eight years uh, to meet uh, climate adaptation projects across Africa. And the reality is that we are far from meeting these targets. Uh, the good news is that uh, we, ha we have made progress in terms of the, uh, regarding the loss and damage fund in supporting those affected by climate change impacts. However, uh, the, the debate is when the, some of that money will be released. So despite this breakthrough, more needs to be done, including fulfilling outstanding commitments, especially on, a, on adaptation funding. Uh, the second thing is we also need to think about homegrown solutions from a funding perspective and use technology as we are leaders in technology in Africa uh, as a community uh, to, bring together, uh, to bring solutions. The private sector also has a role to play when it comes to climate action finance through collaborative and innovative action uh, that complements government and civil society uh, to help build a sustainable uh, and prosperous future for all. Then the fourth one, uh, and the most significant highlight for me when I joined, uh, is when I joined the 50 leading CEOs across Africa who are part of the Africa Business Leaders Coalition uh, uh, to present the Africa Business Leaders Climate Statement. Uh, these key commit, uh, corporate commitments uh, on climate action represent the, fact, the first unified Africa private sector-led uh, voice uh, at COP. This statement informed by the six regional roundtables that we held across Africa, uh, in, uh, Africa from a diverse sectors including commitments around adaptation and resilience, a just transition and mitigation, and calls for action uh, on the international community to support the Africa continent uh, in these endeavors. Uh, Safaricom is uh, honored to be part of the 15 uh, Kenyan companies uh, from, from, from uh, across, uh, who are representing Kenya from across, uh, uh, across Africa, who've joined the coalition alongside other corporates. Um, so people represented in the uh, corporates represented uh, in this room, Equity, Nation Media Group, Diamond Trust, uh, EABL, amongst others. As the Assistant Secretary General and CEO of the United Nations Compact, uh, Global Compact, uh, lightly put it during the launch of the statement, climate change presents three trillion shillings investment opportunity for Africa by 2030. But this potential will only be realized will not be realized unless the private sector is involved. Uh, this coalition, the ABLC, has a critical role to play in ensuring the voice of Africa private sector is heard on the global stage uh, to ensure the continent's growth is not only sustainable but also green. As I conclude, I also wanted to say that charity be begins at home and I wanted to outline a couple of areas that uh, we are passionate about uh, as Safaricom and we have uh, uh, been, been focusing on. Um, so my message today is, is that the fight against this climate crisis can only be won through meaningful partnership uh, and all of us, whether in private, pu public and NGOs, have a role to play. For those of us in private sector, it all begins by managing and mitigating our environmental impact. For example, at Safaricom, we want to become net carbon uh, emitting, net zero carbon emitting company by 2050, but in the way that we are going, we will achieve that much earlier and we'll be revising that date. Measures to ensure that we meet this target included this, uh, a reliance on high carbon diesel generators, 
uh, including the use of renewable energy. Uh, we have about 6,000 sites in, in Kenya. Uh, we intend that in the next two to three years, we will be able to have put solar across all sites instead of relying on backup uh, generator, uh, in addition to the green um, energy coming from the grid. So uh, we have also planted uh, one million trees in the past year or so, and we intend to plant uh, up to five million uh, by, the, by the year 2025. We are working with Kenya Forest Association, the Community Forest Association. So it's about making plans that are community-led, that impact community in a positive way, uh, but also uh, practical uh, in many ways. In addition to the Saco Gas uh, Partnership or the MGAS Partnership that I mentioned, we are also partnering with a company called MCOPA, where, we, where they provide uh, financing for solar uh, in order for us, uh, for customers uh, across the country, one mi reaching uh, rural households with uh, approximately one million households, uh, impacting four million, uh, um, four million lives. Uh, so in, in, in conclusion, climate change impacts communities, labor markets, and the future of business. Navigating the transition to a, a world we all want and need requires the active participation, investment, and accountability from all sectors. Together, let's continue working col uh, collectively towards a better world. In, a, in the words of United Nations Secretary General, uh, together, let's not relent. Uh, in the fight for climate justice and climate ambition, uh, we can and must win this battle for all of us. But as I've said earlier, charity begins at home for private sector. Uh, we have to make commitments, we have to create an action, and, and we have to lead from the front in supporting the agenda uh, so that our com communities uh, have a better future uh, and we also have a better business in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Peter Dagwa. That's the Chief Executive Officer of Safaricom PLC. Next on stage, I'd like to invite Mr. Paul Russell of KCB Group. He has assured me he has very brief remarks, and then we usher the panel in.